There's a kind of love that God only knows God only knows what you've been through God only knows what they say about you But God only knows the real you There's a kind of love that God only knows Welcome everybody, you guys stand with us. There I was on death row, guilty in the first degree. Son of God hanging on a hill, hell was my destiny. Crowd was shouting, crucify. It could have come from these lips of mine. Dirty shame was killing me, and it would take a miracle to wash me clean. Then I Today, Pastor Linfield is going to be sharing with us about the freedom that comes from some of those words that Jesus spoke as he was on the cross. So we look forward to that as we move into a time of worship. But for now, why don't you just have a seat just for a couple of minutes?
A few announcements to share with you this morning as we get rolling. I'm Todd, one of the pastors here, and it's a privilege to have you join us today, whether you're in person or joining us online. We're glad that you're with us. And if you're here for the first time, we want you to know that we consider you a VIP, and we'd love to get a chance to meet you after the service. If you'd be willing to do two things. First of all, in the seat in front of you, there is a card that says VIP on it. If you're new with us today, if you could fill that out. And if you've got a couple of minutes after the service, bring that card out to the VIP table in the lobby. Uh, I'll be out there after the service. Would love to say hi to you. Uh, again, greet you and welcome you, but also answer any questions that you might have about the church. So if you have some time, it would be great to do that. The other thing that we have is there's a card uh, also in, in front of you or alongside of you that uh, is a prayer card. And if you have need of prayer, or if you know someone who needs prayer, take a few moments to fill that out, and you can take those at the end of the service and put them into the donation boxes out in the lobby just outside the doors. And we got people at the church here, also at our Aiken campus, that are praying weekly for folks in need. And so, again, if you have specific needs or if you know someone, please be sure to let us know about that because we'd love to be lifting them up in prayer. The other thing you'll notice about our church, if you're, if you're new here, is that we do not take a, uh, any kind of a uh, donation or collection during the service, but rather for offering purposes. If you feel that you want to support the church, there's really three ways you can do that uh, financially. You can give a donation into the giving boxes out in the lobby, or if you go to thejourneynorth.com, which is our website, uh, there's a give button, and you can choose to give that way. Or if you've downloaded the Journey North app, then we would want to encourage you to use that as well. Um, but however you choose to support the church, know this, we greatly appreciate it. And if you set up a recurring gift, that helps us with our financial planning as the year goes on. Also, the thing, thing about giving is that by now you should have received a giving statement if you had requested one. And they emailed those out actually a couple of weeks back. If you didn't get one, let us know and uh, call the office. We'll make sure that we get you one because we know that that's important for you as well. Got some fun stuff coming up on the 27th next Sunday. We've got potluck and pickleball. Um, if you don't know what pickleball is, you're not going to find out if you're here at the Baxter campus. You'll have to go to Aiken for that. But uh, we're going to play some games. We're going to have some fun after the 1030 service at both campuses. We'd love to have you join us. A uh, little bit of potluck, a little bit of time of fellowship, and uh, just spend a little time together after the service. So if you're willing to do that, uh, join us again after the 1030 service next Sunday here at this campus, or like I say, if you really want to learn about pickleball, then you got to go to Aiken. Otherwise, we'll play some other games here. Also on the 27th, we do have a 6 o'clock meeting that night, a uh, special business meeting. We're voting on a uh, governing team and some other things like that. So if you're a member, uh, please consider joining us for, for that as well next Sunday. With that, let's uh, stand back up. We're going to enter back into time of worship, and I would like to pray as we do that. God, it is so good that we get a chance to come together and spend time in worship and in fellowship, Lord. We do not want to forsake the opportunity that we have to come together because, you know, Lord, it's a freedom that you have given to us, and we're very grateful for that. So, Lord, as we come together now, as we lift up your voice, Father, I just ask, lift our voices to you, that I would ask that you would bless this place, inhabit our praises, Lord. You are a good and loving God, and you are worthy of our praise. And Father, we just dedicate this time to you in the precious name of your Son, Jesus. Amen.
promises in your promises my confidence it is a faithfulness and I will rest in your promises my confidence is a faithfulness I will rest in your promises leaders. Um, and I just wanted to share a little bit this morning. Um, last last week's message um, really kind of hit home for me as far as um, really taking in what it means when God or when Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross for us. And I grew up as a Christian all my life, so it, I knew that from when I was little. And it just kind of was one of those things that's just part of your faith. You know, Jesus died on the cross for you. Your sins were forgiven if, as long as you accept him. That whole thing. And it just kind of lost its impact over the years. And this series has really um, changed or really made it deeper meaning for me, um, especially last week's when um, Linville was talking about um, the love that Jesus had and, and just kind of describing the, the pain that he went through and the sacrifice and experience especially the part where he described um, where he's, you know, uh, separated, completely separated. It was dark, and it wasn't just that he died. It was that he eternally was separated for a moment from God, and that was supposed to be for us, Um, and he paid that price, and it's something that we'll never be able to understand, but we can live in that freedom knowing that he did it for us, so we can have eternity with him someday. And um, that same morning, I read um, a devotional that I read in the morning uh, or in the days. And um, it's just kind of a little devotional that I like to read. And it's kind of, it pulls scripture and it kind of puts it in um, a perspective as if Jesus is talking to me when I'm reading it. So I'm just going to read a little bit of it. It says, in my presence, there is fullness of joy. As you peer into my presence, remembering who I am, in all my power and glory. Ponder also my eternal commitment to you. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate you from me. Your relationship with me has been rock solid secure ever since you confessed your sinfulness and received my forgiveness. You are my my beloved in whom I delight. This is your permanent identity. You can find joy even in this broken world because I have set eternity in your heart. Spend time refreshing yourself in my presence, where you can relax and learn to delight yourself in me above all else. As the love bonds between us grow stronger, so does your desire to help others enjoy this amazing life you have found in me. When your love for me overflows into other people's lives, there is abundant joy both in heaven and on earth. As you go along this path of life, I will lead you and I'll bless you with pleasures forevermore. 
So as we sing this next song, I just pray that you would take a deep breath, hear the words that we're singing, remember what his sacrifice meant to us, or what it means to us, what he did, how much he loves us. Remember that no matter how broken we are, he puts us back together and he makes us whole. So let's remember that as we sing this next song and, remember, and let's praise him and be in joy for who he is.
Let's sing out together, amazing grace. Let's just put all our attention, all our focus on him and his amazing love and grace as we sing it. Sing it with us. forget our our home that is in you thank you God so much for who you are in our lives thank you for your sacrifice let us not forget what you have done for us let us live our lives in joy for you we love you so much God and we give this morning to you in your name amen you may be seated
Well, again, welcome to the Journey North here at the Baxter campus and online. My name is Linfield. Uh, I'm one of the pastors here, and it is so, so good to be a church, to be a part of a church where we're one church in two locations here at the Baxter campus and then at the Aiken campus as, as well. And we are in a message series. All together, we're in a message series. We're looking at the sayings of Jesus, what Jesus said as he was hanging on that cross. Jesus was hanging on that cross from nine in the morning until three in the afternoon. And Jesus said seven statements that were full of love, full of grace, and full of mercy. Now, I want to ask a question here, okay? How many of you like to have a checkoff list? You like to have a list, you have boxes, you can check things off. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of these, I like to have a checkoff list. I like to check things off, see, I have done that, move on to the next box, check that off, I have done that, it's good. Yeah, I feel good about myself when I check boxes off. It's the weirdest thing, right? Sometimes I just make a box to check check it off. There's even nothing to do. I just want to check it off. So yeah, it's weird. I know. But to me, it is such a rewarding feeling when I get to that to-do list and I, I'm done. I complete it. Anybody else like that? You like to do that? Yeah. Yeah, I like to complete things. I remember when I was in high school, I, I ran track my junior year of high school. And in track, I, I did the shot put, which I was okay at. I did the discus, and I was no good at that at all. Some of you have heard stories about that. No good. I was awful. Uh, but I was also a relay race. I was in a relay race. I did the four by 200 relay race. Uh, you know, you look at my size now, despite my size now, I was actually in high school a pretty fast runner. Uh, and I'm sure if, if I need to, I could run fast now, but I just might kill over and die. But, uh, but in high school, I did this relay race. And, and it was a lot of fun. And I remember our last track meet. It was the last meet of the season. I was so glad track was going to be done because, you know, running, I like to run when I, I go and tackle somebody because football. That's why I ran track, just to get myself a little faster for football. But to run constantly, it just boggles my mind that people would want to do this. And so at the end of the track season, I was so excited to be done with this. It's our last one. No longer will I be hitting people with the disc because... I did that quite a few times. No longer will I be throwing a shot, but no longer will I be trying to hand a baton off to somebody else and most of the time missing the person and falling on my face. I, I won't be doing this anymore. It's going to be great. Well, this last track meet, I was the second in our, in our relay race. And I get the baton just fine. And I'm running. I'm jogging along. I'm, I'm actually beating everybody. Just let you know that. Just want to throw that out there. I'm out in front, and it's because our starter was really good. But, you know, I'm out, I'm out in front, I'm, I'm coming, in, you know, it's a half a lap, I'm running my half a lap, I'm getting to my next person in line, third person in line. And, of course, if you've ever ran a relay race, you know that there's only a certain amount of, of space that you have to hand off your baton. And, and so I, I see this coming up, and I notice that the guy in front of me takes off a little sooner. And I'm like, oh, no, this is not good. And so I try to get, a, get going a little faster. And, I, and I'm running, I'm running, running. Of course, I have a lot of momentum. Even back then, up here, up here, there's a lot of momentum going this way. And I, I'm trying to pass this baton off, right? And I'm like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So I do the Superman leap for the guy. Have you ever seen that in track? Nobody saw that in track either until I did it in that day. And so I just leaped for him. Ah! And he caught it, which was great. But then on the, it was like one of those slow motion things. You were like, yes, he caught it. And then you notice that there's the ground coming and your face is going to go right into it. And that's what happened. And I skinned up my nose, my cheeks. I had the weirdest, <laughs> the weirdest scrapes. I had him on my cheeks right here and my nose, and up here. So everything here was fine. I just red, red, and red. And it was bleeding. And I was just sitting on the ground. And I was just watching them run. 
And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. And then we finished, we came in second. And I'm like, yes, and I yell out with my face bleeding. <laughs> I yell out, yay, it is done, it's over. <laughs> and my coach said, we could hear you, you know, I was so glad that it was done. I mean, I was just laying on the track. <laughs> My face is bleeding, and I'm like, it's over. It's done. The season's done. I don't have to do this anymore. And I really liked that feeling, even though my face was bleeding, and I had funny scar or scrapes after that. But I look at Jesus on the cross, and Jesus is second to the last statement that, that he spoke out on that cross was not a cry of anguish, but I believe it was more of a declaration of victory. See, Jesus had, had reached the finish line, mission accomplished. And as you read through the gospel of John, you'll pick up on a theme that that was what he was supposed to accomplish or what he needed to finish. And this theme was over and over again. And you pick it up in John 4, 34, and and John touches on this when John quotes Jesus. And Jesus says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. My food, my nourishment, what gets me going, what fills me up is to do the will of my Father. Again, this theme goes on to John 5, and Jesus is quoted here saying, but this testimony that I have is greater than that of John, and he's meaning he's referring to John the Baptist, for the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I'm doing bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. Now, here's what's interesting. These words, finish and accomplish, come from a Greek word, and that Greek word is telosio, telosio. And that word means should bring to an end or should accomplish, should finish. It's like a a future tense, like it will be done soon or it's going to be, it should be finishing up. And Jesus' life on earth was devoted in finishing and accomplishing the Father's will. And we see in John 4, 34, Jesus is saying, you know, my very food, my nourishment is the will of him who sent me. And everything Jesus did while here on earth was, was put towards that accomplishment of God's will. And again, Jesus says, what does he say in John 5? He says, for the works, the will, the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that that I am doing, and bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. Now, here's, here's an interesting thing. An interesting observation. If you continue to read in John and you go to John chapter 17, you'll see this word again. But instead of a future tense verb, like it was in John 4 and John 5, we'll see it in a different way. Now, we hear Jesus' words as he is, he's praying a prayer in John 17. And this prayer is known as a high priestly prayer that he praise. And in this prayer, Jesus is indicating the accomplishing, meaning the accomplishing of the work of God's will. And it becomes a past tense verb here. Uh, Look what it says in John 7, 4. And this is right, 17, 4, and this is right before Jesus is arrested and right before he, he is tried and right before he is crucified. And this is what it says. It says, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Now, this same Greek word, but now it's the same Greek word, but now it's in a past tense. It means that it's already been done. See, at this moment in scripture, Jesus is saying that that he has accomplished his work. He's accomplished what God has 
brought him on earth to do. Now, all that's left, the concluding act, which would be his death on the cross. Now, that's all that's left. So then we get to John 19. John 19, 28 says this later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scriptures would be fulfilled, Jesus said, and this is one of his statements, he said, I am thirsty. And a jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it and put the sponge on the stalk of a hispa plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Now, in the Greek, this, this finish is, is from the same, same root word as this, the, what was in John 4 and 5. But now this finish has a little different meaning. It's a referring to a paying a bill or paying off a tax bill or a debt, that the debt would be paid in full. And we know this because there has been uh, receipts found that have the same word on it, meaning that this debt has been paid. Rece receipts all the way from biblical times has been found. So when John is writing here, he's writing these words. He, he's saying or referring to Jesus' statement as Jesus is saying, man, the payment has now been paid in full. It is finished. In Jesus' final breaths, and guess what? He had you on his mind as he's speaking out. It is finished. The debt has been taken care of. <laughs> so what really has been taken care of then? Have you ever thought about that? I mean, we know that the will of God has been taken care of, but now the debt, this word here, is, is a little bit different. The debt's been taken care of? What, what does that truly mean? Well, I believe Hebrews 10 describes the goal of it all, the, the answer to it all. Hebrews 10, 4 through 7 says this, For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer. You were not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. Then I said, look, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written about me in the scriptures. And then we jump to verse 10, and it says, For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. And then we go to verse 15, or 2 Corinthians 5, 15, and it says, He died for everyone so that those who received his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live, they will live for Christ who died and was raised from the dead. And then we go to verse 21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Glory, hallelujah, right? Once and for all, it was finished. And because of that, we can now have confidence that Jesus' death covered our sins. It was paid in full. Has anybody ever paid your debt before? Have you ever had a meal paid for? I remember when, uh, when I was in college. It was my first year of college, and I played football, and all of us guys, uh, freshmen, went out to supper. We thought we'd go out to supper. We had kind of like this family that adopted a few of us. And, and they took us out to supper in downtown Minneapolis, a little higher-priced restaurant than I'd ever go in as a college freshman. And we went to this restaurant, and we were talking about football, and we were talking about uh, a God, and we were just talking about life and kind of goals. And, 
aspirations, things like that. And as the check came, I remember the waitress saying, you don't have to worry about this. It's already been taken care of. And here is a note to you. And so all of us guys are reading this note, and it said, keep up the good work and trust in God. R.C., Minnesota Vikings quarterback. <laughs> and we're like, what? And we look around, and we're like, who? And of course, me, I'm a Bronco fan. Like, who's R.C.? What's going on? And everybody's like, that's Randall Cunningham. What? Randall Cunningham? Didn't he play for the <laughs> Eagles? No, he's a Vikings quarterback in 1997, you know? Like, what? It was so cool. Then we fought over who's going to keep the receipt. I didn't win. But, but it was so cool to see that, that our debt was paid for. <laughs> that we didn't have to pay for that meal that night. And, and it was just cool to note, you know, keep the good, you know, trust in God. Oh, man. It was such a cool thing. I still remember it to this day. You know, I believe when Jesus said, said on that cross, it is finished. <laughs> it is finished. And as we're there and we're imagining that we're there and we're at the foot of the cross and we've heard Jesus say, it is finished. And even though watching him and looking at him, we would have sorrow in our hearts and we'd be crushed and we'd be hurting and we'd be crying and just seeing pain and anguish on his face and hearing him say it is finished, knowing that the end is coming, we can know that there are significant areas that it is finished in, like the area of atonement for our sins the covering of our sins. Also, when Jesus said, it is finished, we will hear that scripture had been accomplished. The fulfillment of prophecy had been done. When Jesus said, it is finished, and you know, I believe he was saying, man, I have accomplished and finished and fulfilled the law of Moses. I think when Jesus said, it is finished, finished the seal <laughs> he was sealing the fate of satan when he said it is finished see all of this jesus finished it for us all of it he paid it for us he gave for the atonement for us when adam and eve sinned the original sin they became cursed there was a curse upon them and all mankind of sin. And after that original sin, the only blood that could atone for that was the blood of animals, but that could only be once in, once in a while, once every year for the sin of all people. But those animal sacrifices could never permanently remove sin. Only the perfect sacrifice, God's only son, could do that. In that bruised, pierced, bleeding body, our sins were covered. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. And what he did on that cross covered mankind's sin. And we can now have a real relationship with God the Father. And a, and a good clue that we can have this relationship this intimate relationship with the holy God is when we read Luke 23, when it says this, it was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. See, there's a big temple there in Jerusalem. And, and it was Passover weekend. The day of atonement, when, 
when the priest, the high priest, would go into what was called the Holy of Holies. See, there was sections in the temple. And one section, right before the Holy of the Holies, was called the Holy Place. And then the high priest, once a year, could go into the Holy of Holies, where the presence of God resided. And Bible, the Bible says, the historian Luke says that 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 curtain that was separating, separating us from the Holy of Holies was torn from top to bottom. And that was, that was for us so that we may walk into the presence of God. See, only the high priest could enter the highly sacred room. And that was only once a year on the Day of Atonement. But when the veil was split, there was no longer a divider between man and God. And Hebrews 9 says it this way, but when Christ came as our high priest, as high priest of the good things that are now already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands, that is to say is not a part of this creation. Now, he did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but the in, he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. The blood of goats and goats and bulls and, and the ash of heifers sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean sanctified them so that they were outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleansed our, our consciousness from the acts that led to death so that we may serve the living God. See, it was finished in the area of atonement. It was finished in the area of scripture. In the Old Testament, there are so many prophecies speaking about the promised Messiah. The prophecies in the scripture speaking of Jesus' birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. And as we're imagining that we're there at the scene of execution, Jesus is on that cross. and We see the blood coming down And we see the hurt and the pain on his face. And as through our tears, we are looking at him and we're hearing him. And we read this again in John 19. And we see that later on that that everything had now been finished so that scripture would be fulfilled. We hear him say, man, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar, because this is fulfilling Psalms 69, a wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on the stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. And when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and he gave up the spirit. And this shows us that he was fulfilling scripture, that, that once Jesus had been offered that sour, gross vinegar wine, he knew that not one of the scriptures remained unfulfilled. You know what's interesting to me? You know what shows me something in this scripture? is is if Jesus is so careful to fulfill the smallest prophecy, like saying, I'm thirsty, and tasting vinegar wine, like it has in Psalms, it talks about that. If he has that in his mind, fulfilling the smallest detailed prophecy, you know what that shows me? Is that if he kept that detail, how much more would he keep his promises to us? today. Keep his word for us today. I mean, he is worthy of putting all your trust into. And Jesus' spirit did not leave him until every messianic scripture was fulfilled 
down to that last, even that last detail. And when Jesus said, it is finished, not only did he fulfill scripture, but he also was fulfilling the law of Moses. That had been fulfilled through Jesus. Matthew says this in Matthew 5, 17. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish, to fulfill, to finish their purpose. See, you and I, no matter how much we try, we can never achieve God's righteousness in our own fleshly works. Only through Jesus Christ can we be justified, made righteous before God the Father. Only Jesus lived a sinless life, a life of pure righteousness, fulfilling the smallest letter and stroke of the law. And when Jesus said, it is finished, he was saying, man, the atonement of sin has been accomplished. The fulfillment of scripture has been accomplished. The fulfillment of the law of Moses has been accomplished. And when Jesus said, it is finished, it sealed Satan's doom. And we know that because the author of Hebrews writes it this way in Hebrews 2. He says, since the children have flesh and blood He too shared in their humanity, meaning Jesus came as flesh and blood, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death, or in other words, free those that have been held in slavery by their own sin and guilt. With Jesus' blood on that cross and him finishing it, (laughs) Satan does not have a hold on us no more. The walls have come down, the veil has been torn, and we have victory and we have freedom and we can say, I have life in Jesus Christ and not death and sin. And to this I say glory to God. For Jesus has come to give life and life to the fullest. See, in his finish is our freedom. When he said it is finished, he is declaring, my children have freedom. Freedom in me and through my blood. <laughs> And here's the great thing about Jesus. The thing that gets me so excited about following the Savior. The thing that gets me so excited about saying that he is my God. He is my Savior. You know why? Is that he did not stay dead, did he? He came out of that tomb. He said, it is finished. Death no longer has a hold on you. And no longer has a hold on me. He came out of that tomb. Alive. Alive forevermore. And we have life with him. For those that believe in him. Have their faith in him. Trust in him. No longer are we slaves to that sin. For it is finished, it's done, it's accomplished. And now we can stand in victory. Will you stand with me? (laughs) With Jesus accomplishing, accomplishing all on that cross, you and I can have freedom, right? You and I can have freedom. We we have freedom from sin. And we have freedom from death that comes from sin. That that death. Spiritual death. You know, we're all going to die someday, right? 
But here's the thing. Like he said to, when Lazarus, Lazarus, one of his best friends, died four days later, Jesus called him forth from the tomb. He was alive again. He said, you know what? Yeah. Well, even though you die, yet shall you live. Why? Because Jesus accomplished it all. He finished it. And he's victorious. And he came out of that tomb. <laughs> he's paid it all for us. I'm just saying, if you, if you have not trusted in him, have not given your life to him, man, just do that. It, it's just by confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus died for you, you will be saved. Paul writes about that in Romans. It's not hard. It's not meant to be hard. To have a relationship with Jesus is, is quite simple. You just need to open yourself up to it and believe. Life's not gonna get easier. It's gonna get better because <laughs> our God is with us. His Holy Spirit is now with us. I'm just saying, if you don't know him, get to know him today. Get to know him today. Right now, just say, Lord, come into my life. Be my savior. Forgive me of my sins. <laughs> I believe that you died for me and you rose again. <laughs> Walk with me. You'll be saved. And then you live every day, one step at a time for Jesus. And sometimes we fall, but we don't stay down. We get back up and say, okay, I'm gonna be better. I'm gonna do better for Jesus. And I'm gonna give my life to him more and more and more. And I'm gonna be his hands and his feet. And I'm gonna serve him and love him and love people. Because of what Jesus did on that cross, we have freedom. It is finished. Lord, we come before you and we are just humbled about what you went through for us. And we thank you for that. We thank you for, for taking the nails in your hands and your feet, being whipped, bruised, beaten, crown of thorns on your head. We thank you for all the mocking and the, the, the cursing that was at you because, Lord, you, you, you did that to be the perfect sacrifice. Because of your blood, Lord, you cleanse us white as snow. Because of your blood, Lord, we can have a relationship with God the Father, and we thank you for that. But Lord, we thank you. We thank you for being a living, a living Savior that came out of that tomb. We both, we have to have both the cross and the empty tomb. And we thank you for both of those, Lord. Because with both of those, man, we have life and life to the fullest. And so I pray, Lord, that you will help us as we walk out into this world, as we walk back into our lives, as we go into this next week, Lord, that you will help us to know that we are set free from sin. We don't have to live in our guilt and our shame anymore. That we are children of the most high God. Be with us. In your precious name, in the name of Jesus,
I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Well, thanks for joining us this morning. It was great worshiping with you all. Um, I pray that you go out and remember that you are free because of what Jesus did in his sacrifice. Have a blessed week. Thanks, guys.